Today I had a patient referred by a general dentist with a complication that one of the roots of the muxtary second molar was displaced into the muxtary sinus and had caused an opening between the mouth and the sinus. After taking the x-ray, we sent back the patient to bring out the root and closing the opening. But a question that pops out is that how can it determine the correct position of the tooth roots in the relation of the muxillary sinus just by looking at the radiographs. Stay tuned to the end of this video. Hi there, I'm Farida and welcome back to my channel. Before I continue, I want to thank all of you guys for your support and subscribing my channel and helping me to grow this channel. Many of the times in a radiograph, the root apex appears to be inside the maxillary sinus, but still there is no communication or oral fistula after the extraction. First, we need to understand what we see on the radiograph. Bone is made up of outer bone that's called the cortical or compact bone, and in the center we have the calculus or trabecular or sponge bone. Cortical bone is more compact and dense, whereas calculus bone is more prose and less dense. So cortical bone absorbs more x-ray and appears white or radiopaque on a radiograph. And the calculus bone absorbs lesser photons of x-ray and appears as a gray shade or radiolucent on a radiograph. In every bone, cancellous bone is surrounded by the cortical bone, so cancellous bone is never in direct contact with any soft tissue. There will always be a thin layer of cortical bone between the cancellous bone and non-bone tissue, like we have in the dental lamina before the periodontal ligament that is soft tissue, or the cortical borders of the inferior alveolar canal before the nerve. So the cortical bone is clearly demarcated on a radiograph as a white line or radiopaque line. That is why we see a muxillary sinus floor or the borders of the inferior alveolar canal as a white line or radiopaque line. For example, in a intraoral periapical radiography or in a panoramic radiography, we can clearly see a white line of the muxillary sinus or a radiopaque line and a white line of the inferior alveolar canal. So what is the tricky part that I kind of see the roots inside the sinus? An uh, intraoral periapical radiograph or a panoramic radiograph is a two-dimensional radiograph of the three-dimensional structures. So whatever we see on an image of a two-dimensional radiography, all the hard tissues are superimposed over one another. For example, on the buccal palatal view, there is a good amount of bone between the premolar root and the maxillary sinus floor. And there is a distance, but on an intraoral periapical radiograph, it appears as if the root of the premolar is inside the muxillary sinus. This is because of the two-dimensional natures of an intraoral periapical radiograph. This two-dimensional overlap of structures gives different appearance depending on the relationship of these structures. In the radiographic appearance, there have been different classification of vertical relations between the maxillary molar roots and the maxillary sinus, but we are concerned only with three broad categories. No overlap, overlap, roots, and the sinus. Let's go into details of these three categories. No overlap. Here there is no or little normalization of the muxillary sinus, so the sinus floor is away from the root apex. So on a radiograph, we see a continuous white line representing the muxillary sinus floor that is at some distance from the premolar and molar roots. Chance of oral anterior communication are rare, but if there is a thin layer of apical bone, that's separating the root apex and the sinus floor, and 
oral anterior communication may be established if forceful instrumentation is done in the extraction socket. The overlap category. Here there is extensive pneumatization, but luckily for the patient, maxillary sinus is not in direct contact with the premolar and molar roots. The sinus is either buccal or palatal to the root. On a radiograph, it appears as if the roots are inside the maxillary sinus cavity because the roots appear overlapped on the maxillary sinus floor. But at the same time, you can clearly see the continuous white line representing the maxillary sinus floor. The continuous horizontal white line indicates that the roots are outside the sinus. The chance of oral anterior communication are rare, but if there is the thin layer, a buccal or palatal bone between the root and the sinus floor, an oral anterior communication may be established a forceful instrumentation is done in the extraction socket. So the third category is the roots in the sinus. In this case, there is extensive pneumatization. The sinus expands and flows down with aging. The white line representing the maxillary sinus floor forms a dome shaped around the premolar and molar roots. This is because the pedial fiber are attached to the bone and prevent bone resorption around the roots. So the sinus just goes up and down around the roots. Chance of oral intercommunication in this category is almost 100%. Although they may be an intact sinus membrane that present after the extraction of the root and can prevent oral intercommunication. So be careful with any instrumentation in this case that could be lead to an oral antral communication. So I can always have a thin amount of bone that could be the sinus floor or the lamina dura and I have the sinus membrane. So I have to be careful if I take out that thin bony cortical bone that's around the tooth I should be very careful not to damage the sinus membrane. So these are the things you need to know while viewing the two-dimensional radiographs of the maxillary posterior teeth. If you want to know the exact three-dimensional relationship of the tooth root with the maxillary sinus floor, then you should order a CBCD scan. If you plan a dental extraction in the maxillary posterior region, and if you see the sinus floor in close approximation to the tooth roots, you should always inform the patient of the possible complication of oral antral communication, even if the chance is low. And reassuring the patient that you can manage the complication and bringing out the retained root and closing the opening. Okay, that's all for today. Thank you for your support and if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you for subscribing my channel and have an awesome day.